everybody, how's it going? It's Calvin again from Crossfire Gaming, and today I'm going to show you all the campaign skulls in Halo 3. That's right, all of them. Freaking all 13 of them. I am prepared to talk for 12 minutes straight. Are you ready to listen for me to 12 minutes straight? Anyways, this is the first skull. This is the blind skull on the mission Sierra 117. Once you come to this first area, you after the first time you fight the Covenant, and right over here on this random rock is the blind skull. Now, You'll see, like, I don't get any sort of pop for it or anything because it's basically a secondary skull. Uh, this game basically only gives you achievements for the primary skulls. So this is the Iron Skull. You're gonna, when you come into this clearing, you're gonna come off of that, and you're basically gonna work your way through here to try to get Johnson. Right here is where the Pelican lands after you're done with it. But I'm a little early, so I'm just gonna hop onto this ledge and I'm gonna follow it all the way to the end. Now. Um, the Blind Skull, I remember, it, it actually disables everything on your HUD. Which is, I don't know, it's, it's actually pretty hard to play with, but it's kind of a cool idea. And the Iron Skull, basically, where it's kind of like permadeath, where once you die, um, you have to restart the mission. And if you're playing in co-op, you have to go back to the last checkpoint. So it's really hard to do in co-op, really hard to do in solo. Iron is just a really hard skull in general. But as you can see, I get an achievement for it because you get achievements for all the primary skulls, but none for the secondaries. There are nine primary skulls and four secondaries throughout this game. And this is, means there are basically 13 of them. So this is the Black Eye Skull in Crow's Nest. And the Black Eye Skull, it's actually one of the more unique skulls of Halo, where once your shields go down, the only way to get them back is to punch enemies. You basically have to just hit enemies until your shield recharges. And the Black Eye Skull is located right on the pipe, right in the beginning of the mission. So it's actually a pretty, really easy skull to get. All you got to do is do a little parkour, and uh, you'll get it really quick. Um, this next skull is called the Grunt Birthday Party Skull. This one causes, whenever you headshot a grunt, they basically explode into confetti. It's one of my favorite skulls. And you're going to come to the sewer tube, and you're going to see this green arrow underneath the grate. And turns out there's actually, like, a secret tunnel there. And what I'm doing now is I'm trying to, like, go forward off the ledge and then back up so that I land on the ledge. This is the first method to do it. I'm going to show you two methods to get this skull. As you can see, the skull's back there, but that was the first method. The second method is that if you have a grab lift from earlier in the mission, I totally forget how I got the grab lift, um, you can just put it down here, and then you'll go immediately right up to where it is, and it's just a perfect jump, and you can go over and get your grunt birthday party skull, which is cool. Um, another thing about these skulls is that once you get enough of them, you actually unlock the special Hayabusa armor for use in multiplayer. And it's actually a pretty cool armor set. I'm sad they didn't bring it back into like Halo 4 or Halo Reach or anything, but it was a pretty cool set nonetheless. And the way to get it is you get a piece when you get five skulls, you get a piece when you get nine skulls, and then you get the final piece, which is the helmet, when you get all 13. At least I think it's the helmet. I, I forget the order in which you get them, but this is the Tough Luck skull. This is on the mission Savo Highway. And basically, once you get to that weird pipe, you just got to go over it. You can also go underneath the pipe and do some weird parkour there, but I decided to just go over it because it's a lot easier, and then if you hop over to this uh, rock ledge, you'll find the Tough Luck Skull, which uh, makes enemies more evasive to your movements, like every time you shoot them, they'll try to like dodge out of the way, or every time you throw a grenade, they'll dive out of the way and stuff. It's It kind of makes the enemies a little harder to kill. Uh, this is the Catch Skull of the Storm. This skull is probably one of the most irritating in the entire campaign. You see the skull right there on top of that thing, but you also see this Wraith. The thing with this skull is that once you destroy either of the wraith, the wraiths, um, the skull disappears. So you need to get it while the wraiths are still alive, which is kind of hard, considering that grunts and ghosts can completely kill you in a matter of five seconds, even on freaking normal. So this is, a, this is the situation I managed to get in myself into. You need to get a warthog, and you need to drive it up to that structure there, and you need to pretty much crouch jump your way up there. Um, I learned a lot, actually, doing this. I learned that if you stand in the vicinity of a wraith, turns out other wraiths will not shoot you. Um, I probably should have used that tactic here, but as you can see, I'm kind of hiding. He hasn't spotted me just yet, so it gives me just enough time to get up here. And, of course, I missed the jump like three times over. And just crouch jump onto the top, and I finally get it. Now, the catch skull, the catch skull makes enemies more prone to throwing grenades. Um, if anyone has played Call of Duty World at War, that's pretty much the an exact definition of the catch skull. Everybody throws grenades. And this one took me about half an hour to get, so I just throw the skull at the Wraith, and then the Wraith just runs me over, which is perfect. Just freaking perfect. 
Um, isn't that fun? Uh, the next skull is, I believe, the f Fog Skull. Yep, it's the Fog Skull. And this is on the map Floodgate. This is literally in the beginning of the mission. Um, yeah, and right here you're going to see this Flood. And this Flood is actually carrying the Skull. And you can see I'm like resetting saves every once in a while, trying to get him and make sure that the Skull actually lands somewhere where I can pick it up. Literally just repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly killing this guy. Uh, just to make sure that the skull actually lands where I can get it. So basically, you're kind of facing two forces here. You have to kill the guy, but you need to make sure you kill him somewhere where his skull will definitely drop where you can pick it up. I think they may have fixed this in the Master Chief Collection. I've heard the fog skull is actually a little bit easier to get. But as you can see right there, I finally get it to where I can pick it up. And then I pick it up. And the fog skull, it disables your mini map, the tiny thing in the left corner where you can see where all the enemies are. It disables that. So it's, it's kind of a pain to live with, but we, we live with it. Uh, this next skull is called the Famine Skull. This is actually a pretty weird skull. Every weapon you pick up will only have about half the ammo that it normally would if you were playing without the skull. So this is located on the mission The Ark. This is where, um, at one point you're going to go up to a covenant structure and you're going to go through it. This is actually the second, like, weird extension of that covenant structure but it's over here where you need to like parkour over a rock to get on top of it and as you can see the famine skull is located right in there multiple ways to get in here you can do like a weird crouch jump you can do a brute shot i decided to use a grenade because why the heck not and then just crouch up there and booyah i finally got it and that one was a little bit of a pain because i had to fight through all that stuff um, and I believe this next skull is going to be the Cowbell Skull, which is another one of my favorites. Um, the Cowbell Skull causes all explosions to... I think it causes all explosions to increase at a bigger rate, or it causes explosions to be just bigger in general. Um, not exactly sure, like, why... Not exactly sure what it does. It's something to do with explosions. But what you want to do is grab a grab lift right when that Scarab shows up. And this basically going to mean... Yeah, basically the grab lift is required for this. And you're going to come to this hallway later, and you have to put the grab lift in a certain position so that you can jump up and it'll propel you to the top level um, in between these two, like, ramps. And as you can see, I barely see the skull up there, but I just can't get it. Um, I think I actually try for a little while. As you can see, I landed in the thing right below it, which does not help me at all. So I'm going to try it again, and then this time I'm going to put the grab lift a little bit higher, and it actually works out for me eventually. Um, <laughs> I, I mean eventually. This takes a while. This is me doing this for a solid two minutes. And, oh, nope, I missed it. Oh, maybe third time's the charm. Here we go. Here we go. Just jump into it, and there we go. I finally get the frickin' cowbell skull. This should give me an achievement for that alone, because that was just annoying as all hell. Um, but yeah, uh, next skull is the Thunderstorm Skull, and this one causes, I believe it causes all enemies to be a rank, to be max rank that they possibly can be. Like, you'll normally see grunts and they'll be like pretty weak, and you'll normally see elites or brutes and they'll be pretty weak. This one basically puts them to their max rank, where they get like the weird gold armor and stuff, and really 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 just hard to take down and this one is located on the second installation you clear out the first installation this is the installation the elites cleared out um, while you were clearing out the first one and so if you decide to go there you'll see the thunderstorm skull put at the top of this ramp and once you get it booyah you get your thunderstorm achievement which is all fine and dandy and then you can hop on your uh, hornet and get out of here um, this next one is, oh, here we go, the Iwibid Skull. Uh, Iwibid stands for I Would Have Been Your Daddy, I'm pretty sure. And this one requires you to be at the end of the campaign. I recommend doing this bef after you fight Truth. And basically what you got to do is you got to jump through these rings in a certain order. This ring I'm at with the uh, the broken red side on the, on the side, that's ring 4. The one closest to Truth is ring 7. And the closest to the start is ring 1. And you need to jump them in the order 4, 6, 5, 4, 3, 5, 3, 4. Anyways, you can read it. Um, basically, what it does is whenever you jump through a ring, it plays like a weird audio cue. I, I've jumped through these things a million times. I've never heard any sort of audio cue. Maybe it's there, maybe it's not. But basically, if you jump through them in this certain order, it causes a 
sort of tuned to play. I don't know if it's related to Siege of Magical or anything, uh, but basically that's what you got to do, and you just got to work your way through jumping through all these, and then once you're all done, the rings will flash in a certain order. Yeah, make sure you clear out the Covenant at least until ring 5 or 3 or whichever ring is closest to that door so that you don't have to deal with them while you do this. And then once you do it all right, there's those rings lighting up and basically you got to go to wherever the rings lead you. And they're going to lead you straight back to the bridge and you're going to see the Iwabid Skull right there. And what the skull causes the game to do is that less common dialogue will become more common and the more common dialogue will become less common so you can hear the grunt saying weird things a lot more common and then yeah and here's my least favorite mission in all of Halo right behind um, Midnight or Composer actually no Composer from Halo 4 that was my worst that was my least favorite mission ever in Halo this is my second least favorite this is the Tilt Skull Tilt Skull requires enemy uh, basically makes enemy shields act like actual shields where like bolts will deflect off of them and then energy pistols won't exactly like kill them yet so you gotta really lay into enemies in order to kill them um, and basically this one you get to this purple room and you gotta parkour all the way up here and this is actually some complicated parkour because you can hit your head on literally any of these jumps and you finally manage to make it up here and you'll see the skull amid like a pit of bones pretty much and then you pick it up and booyah there's your tilt skull and I decided, hey, this is my least favorite mission, so I'm just going to jump off and try to like get the drop on these guys. And guess what? It doesn't work out because, of course, swing a halo sword, an energy sword. God damn, I'm stupid. Um, yeah, but anyways, here's the final skull. This is on the last mission, Halo. This is the mythic skull. This uh, allows enemies to have double health, so it's a little bit harder than what you might expect. Um, basically, at the beginning of the mission, you want to want to go down this pathway, and then once you get to the end of the pathway, there's the Mythic Skull sitting there, all lonely, and there we go. We have all 13 skulls, we've unlocked all the Hayabusa armor, and there it is. So, thank all of you guys for watching. If you want, you can like and subscribe, and check out um, some more stuff. I mean, why wouldn't you check out some more stuff? I mean, it's not like I got anything else to do. So, see ya!